If you're here watching this, you're probably quite excited about the latest drop from CIG, the new Gatak Silen. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but what I do know is that if you're excited about Star Citizen and maybe you've come to check out Star Citizen during this year's International Aerospace Expo, then this new latest starter ship is probably the one you're going to want to pick. But if you're unsure what the International Aerospace Expo is, well, let me tell you. It's the time of year where Star Citizen puts on show all the ships they've developed, all the ships that you might be able to pick up, and all the ships you sometimes might never be able to. Exactly, it's that time of year where you can give them lots of money. But you know what? This time, I think it's all right. As is the tradition now with SIG, this new ship comes with a plethora of fantastic paints, all of which are on screen now in front of you. The one you'll see mostly in this video, though, is the concierge paint. But it's not the paints that'll get you excited about this ship. It's just how freaking awesome it is. There simply isn't an angle on this ship that I don't like. And that's quite rare for me because I'm quite judgmental of the ships I fly. But alien ships have always managed to impress me. And this Gatak Silen is no different. Now, before we get into the hard reel and gritty numbers, let's have a look at what this ship actually offers you from a player experience point of view. Let's see what the internals of this bad boy are like. Just to give you the raw data, we've got two size one shields, one size one power plant, one size one cooler, and a size one quantum drive somewhere, all crammed in here in this tiny, nice little compact space. In fact, the SIG developers did such a great job saving space, they even managed to somehow implement a weapon storage unit for two size two weapons and eight size one handguns or hand tools. That's really impressive. The central elevator, of course, is how you'll navigate through the ship. You're right, this ship does indeed have floors, not the bad kind. And there's three floors in total. The second floor is your habitation section where you'll find your bed, bathroom, and overall just a nice place to sit down and relax. But don't forget this is an alien ship after all, it's just been adapted to our human comforts. The real throne room though to this ship can be found on the top floor where you'll find your pilot seat and a cathedral, as the developers put it, of style and substance. Now, of course, it's all pretty alien, so how does the seat actually get you into position to fly? Well, like this. It lifts you into the cockpit. How incredible is that view? Just look at the glass, look at the style. It's amazing. And do you know what else would be amazing? you for hitting that subscribe button for liking this video we're not quite at the end yet there's quite a bit more to discuss about this ship but i just wanted to say a big thank you for those of you who are watching now let's continue thanks to this ship's unique design there are some challenges that come with this unlike anything else you have to actually land facing upwards like a tower on your feet it does mean there's lots of space though so let's talk hard points you've got three size three weapons as well as the capacity to carry six one SCU boxes, in grand total giving you six SCU of cargo space. I guess that's not the most impressive thing. I th I'd say the 33 main thrusters is probably the most impressive metric here, which makes it the most agile starter ship in the game. And to match that impressive statistic, you've also got an orchestra to listen to while you fly. I'm going to turn the music off and I'm going to shut up. I want you to hear these engines just for a minute. Now, isn't that fantastic? Music to my ears is what I want to say. Genuinely, I want to give a congratulations to the SIG developers on this entire thing. Everything about this ship is spot on, but it wouldn't be your usual studio review if everything about this ship was absolutely glowing. There are, of course, always caveats with the cheaper ships. You can't get everything for a mere $68, but you do get quite a lot. However, what is this ship actually like to use and fly Let's get into the nitty gritty there now. As previously mentioned, you have to land this ship vertically. You have to land on your back. It doesn't really sound very intuitive and frankly, it's not. It's actually very, very difficult. You could say it's a skill gap in the design of the ship. It is so not intuitive to the way that we fly ships in real life and the way that we do anything in real life actually, that it does make it a bit disorientating. 
The controls do not switch or blend or move in any way though. So once you have mastered it, you should be able to transfer it across to any other ship like this or back again to a normal ship. It's just, for me, it was easier said than done. Even if the landing surface area is rather large. In the latest ISC from Star Citizen, they talked about this ship being unique for its ability to land in tight spaces, thanks to that takeoff and landing design. Um, I don't know which developer thought that was the correct thing to say, because this thing is anything but capable of fitting in tight spaces. It's absolutely massive. Look how hard it is just to get out of the hangar. Those clearances are not easy, so why the SIG developer said that, and in a published video, I don't understand. And another really obvious thing to look at is the shape of the ship. It's just a big circle or triangle. All the sides are the same. You can't roll to get out of danger, as this clip goes to demonstrate. On a normal ship that's pancake designed, so wider in one axis than it is in the other, you could rotate and roll to avoid certain dangers. So if you get into a fight, all angles on you are the same. You are a big blob, and it's definitely gonna come to bite you if you are not prepared for it. Luckily, those three size three guns can pack a punch. And even if they didn't, you've got plenty of size two missiles as well at your disposal. That's right guys, I know I kept it a bit of a secret, but this has 12 size two missiles. The power creep is real with these starter ships. I remember having a Super Hornet back in the day that only had four missiles. Yes, you guys are very lucky. Compared to the choices out there, this does look like one of the better options. The Sayulin, which I'm sure I will pronounce right at some point in this video, is a fantastic starter ship, capable of a lot of things. It can't carry vehicles and it definitely gets outdone by the Nomad in some ways. But it is more agile, it's definitely stronger. I don't really know though if that's what you need. So let me know down in the comments below. If it is what you need and you love the sound of this ship, then let me know. I would love to find out how many of you have already got it and how many of you are just looking at it in case it is right for you. Thank you for watching this episode of Should You Buy? And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.